Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome to the course on medical biomaterials now we are going to talk about biofilm biofilm is a very important uh, concept in uh, biomaterial and uh, it affects quite a lot of uh, biomaterial uh, design and life of a biomaterial. What is this biofilm? Uh, the definition is it is a population of microorganisms concentrated at a solid liquid interface okay, and surrounded by an extracellular polymeric substance okay. it is called EPS matrix. So, this biofilm um, is attachment on material surface. It could be a stainless steel or it could be a polymer, it could be a ceramic, uh, it could be even uh, the inside lining of a vascular graft. Okay. It may contain live cells, it may contain dead cells, uh, it, may con it will contain proteins, sugars, polysaccharides, metabolites that is metabolites that are produced uh, by the bacteria, secondary metabolites and also quorum sensing signaling molecules. So, a biofilm might contain lot of these okay, and they are attached. In, at the early stages the attachment is reversible that means uh, the material leaves, but as time progresses the attachment becomes more and more difficult. Okay. Both gram negative and gram positive bacteria forms biofilms on uh, indwelling medical devices that means uh, uh, like I said it could be a short uh, uh, duration device or it could be a long duration device. Um, biofilm can form even in the uri urinary catheters the first uh, few hours uh, bacteria can start accumulating which is reversible, but as time progresses the attachment becomes very strong and the bacterial biofilm starts growing. So, large number of bacteria can form this biofilm these are the common bacteria found like uh, E. coli, Pseudomonas, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermis, Proteus mirabilis, Klebsiella pneumonia. Enterococcus, Streptococcus and so on actually. So, all these are bacteria found um, in biofilm whether it is a dental implant, whether it is urinary catheters, uh, urethral catheters and so on actually. All these bacteria can form biofilms. I just want to show some pictures. Um, you can see um, the bacterial attachment and growth in some of these dental area. Look at this um, fracture plate. Okay. There is an infection in that you can see this where the bacteria has settled down um, and formed biofilm and it is more difficult to get rid of these type of bacteria um, and compared to bacteria which is in the sessile form or floating form. It is been found that almost you need 10 times more concentration of antibiotics to kill bacteria which are well established on surfaces like I said it could be a metal surface, it could be a polymer surface, it could be a ceramic and so on. Some more pictures look at this, um, this is a prosthetic valve uh, you can see a lot of uh, biofilm uh, growth. Look at this, this is an urethral stent okay. this is called a double JJ pig um, tail urethral stent um, you can see bacterial infection. Generally in the urinary region you may have uh, um, bacteria like E. coli or Proteus mirabilis there. So, um, biofilm is very common in uh, medical implants. It could be um, even uh, within a few hours and it could last for years and years. So, addressing that biofilm um, is a very big issue in uh, biomaterial research because these biofilm can lead to infection, infection can lead to um, uh, immune compromising or failure of the biomaterial and so on actually. There are different strategies that are being practiced in getting rid of uh, biofilm. Um, some of them are successful, some of them still needs a lot of research and uh, uh, you cannot have one single strategy uh, to get rid of all the biofilms because depending upon where the material is uh, uh, introduced the type, the nature uh, of the bacteria and the biofilm can vary quite a lot. Uh, these are some more biofilm pictures, these are scanning electron pictures of uh, staphylococcus biofilm on polyurethane surface you can see this and this is uh, 
so the manas originates are biofilm on polyurethane surface. Okay. So you can see um, not only the bacteria, the exopolysaccharide. So it forms a thick layer. Okay. So a lot of materials, like I said, uh, um, in different environments, uh, end up having biofilm. For example, if you look at catheters, uh, central venous catheters made up of polyurethane, environment is blood, but still you can have Staphylococcus epidermis or Staphylococcus aureus or Pseudomonas um, Klebsiella type of biofilm. Uh, look at hemodialysis catheters, uh, polytetrafluoroethylene is used here, um, again the environment is blood, again Staphylococcus aureus or gram negative anaerobes. Um, polyurethane is used in pulmonary artery catheters, again the environment is blood, sorry, uh, you can have um, coagulase negative Staphylococcus or Enterococcus, Pseudomonas, uh, Actinobacter, urinary catheters like silicon or polyurethane or silicone. This is in the urine environment. You can have E. coli, you can have um, uh, Enterococcus, you can have Proteus mirabilis. Um, look at uh, peritoneal dialysis, silicon, it will have uh, uh, interaction with blood and fluids, solids, you can have Staphylococcus epidermis and Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, enteral feeding tubes like PVC or polyurethane, generally fluids, uh, again you can look at uh, the type of bacteria here. Gastrostomy tubes made up of silicone, polyurethane, intestinal fluids, again enterococcus, staphylococcus, E. coli, um, again uh, endotracheal tubes, PVC, silicone, stainless steel, again you can have uh, uh, staphylococcus, uh, okay. uh, tracheotomy tubes, these are made up of PVC and silicone. Generally, its environment is air, you can have Staphylococcus epidermis and so on. So, you can see the titanium stainless steel in spinal, um, it is uh, in contact with fluids, you can have a coagulase negative Staphylococcus or mycobacterium tuberculosis. Penile implant silicone, uh, it is in touch with urine and fluids, gram positive rods, cocci. Breast implants, silicones, polyurethane, you can have uh, um, again. Uh, coagulants negative staphylococcus. Orthopedic, whether it is knee implant or hip or dental, defibrillators, different types of materials we are talking about mostly metals, you know, cobalt, chromium, aluminum, stainless steel, gold and then uh, inorganic material like zirconia, um, aluminum oxide. So, they all have different types of uh, bacterial contamination like staphylococcus aureus. Um, coagulase negative, staphylococci, gram negative anaerobes and so on actually. Okay. And finally, um, devices, different types of devices, bilary stent, intrauterine device like copper, uh, vascular grafts, coronary stents, intraocular lenses, they all can end up having staphylococcus aureus and epidermis and E. coli. So, these are the common uh, bacteria which um, goes and as I showed you in the past two, two three slides. Uh, the, the environment could be blood, they could be urine, it could be uh, fluids, uh, different types of fluids, uh, cranial fluids, cerebrospinal fluids and so on. So, we have metals, non-metals, polymers okay, and uh, ceramics, they all have these type of uh, infection. Okay, so, how, what are the possible entry points of infection? Periodontal disease, something related to the teeth, catheters. Um, patients um, many times have uh, urinary catheters inserted, so infection can happen. Implant surgery, uh, a device is placed, whether it is an orthopedic, whether it is a dental, whether it is a knee, uh, whether it is a stent, ureteral stent or, cardio or cardiovascular stent. Okay. Um, open wound, if there is a wound which is open, a lot of bacteria, uh, staphylococcus related bacteria can enter. So, these are the points of entry. And um, it has been found that uh, most of the infection happens because of the implant surgery and almost 60 to 70 percent of rejection in the early days of implant is because of infection. So, if you can address uh, the implant related infection in the first two to three weeks, then um, um, almost 70 percent of the rejection of the implant could be overcome. Okay? So, let us look at this biofilm development and dynamics. So, what happens is bacteria when uh, it undergoes starvation and uh, they can shrink and become spores. Okay. So, they become very, very small ultra micro bacteria. So, 
uh, they can attach to surface or they can not be killed by antibiotics. So, the attaching to surface once they attach there is a change in gene expression from swimmer swimmers to biofilm formers. Okay? So, there is a change in gene expression of those uh, bacteria when it is in the sessile form as against when it is in the biofilm form. They can encase themselves with the sli slimy matrix we call it exo polysaccharide lot of sugar. So, there is a slimy matrix that is uh, forming on top of it. And they because of the reduced nutrient availability for bacteria okay, which are at the lower level of the biofilm uh, nutrition diffusion also slows down. So, the bacteria stops growing and they reach this type of a starvation condition and then so there could be change in the gene expression of that. Uh, exchange molecular signal uh, bacteria which are forming biofilms um, they produce a chemical called quorum sensing and um, thereby they can change their gene expression and hence they can move from the sessile to the colonizer and the bacteria can also identify that they are um, a large number of uh, population which are uh, in the colonizing stage. Chemical gradients there could be because of the biofilm which is a matrix there could be a gradient which can create micro environments for different microbial species with different activities to be present. So, the um, bacteria which are on the top of the biofilm which gets nutrients which get oxygen which gets chemicals um, may have a different environment. So, they will have a different activity and growth pattern when compared to bacteria which are right at the bottom of the biofilm which do not get enough nutrient um, which uh, starve much longer which do not get enough oxygen. Okay. So, antimicrobial drugs antibiotics damage bacteria in the upper layer, but do not penetrate or present at low concentrations at the bottom. Okay. Okay. So, they are below the MICs when compared to um, the concentrations of uh, antimicrobials available at the top of this bacteria. So, the bacteria which are at the bottom um, okay, what happens is they become resistance to strains because they are getting uh, uh, drug concentration much below their MIC. So, shear forces can uh, detach cells. So, there are cells which are attached on the surface um, there could be flow shear forces blood flow uh, or urine flow it can detach the cells and uh, they can go out and again attach somewhere else and again form a protective layer. So, you can see there are so many things happening it is a very dynamic process the biofilm growth maturation detachment is a very dynamic process um, and it is a very serious issue especially in the area of bio medical device. So, there are two phases of um, pathogenesis of biomaterial center infection physico chemical interaction between bacteria and surface molecular and cellular interaction. So, first is the physico chemical interaction between bacteria and surface other one is the molecular and cellular interaction. Let us look at it. So, initially bacteria in the Brownian motion they are moving around freely they are in the sessile form. So, they start getting attached. Uh, because of non bonded interaction like van der Waal forces, gravitational forces, electrostatic forces, hydrophobic interactions, hydrogen bonds and so on. Okay. So, they attach either on uncoated surface or there could be already a protein layer which is formed on which these bacteria can be attaching. So, either on uncoated or on a protein coated. Uh, so, the cells deposit adsorbed and slowly they get multiplied exopolysaccharides are formed. So, they start forming a big layer of exopolysaccharide is called the matrix here. Okay. So, the, the bacteria which are on the surface um, get enough oxygen and uh, nutrient the bacteria right at the bottom uh, do not get as much because of the limitations of diffusion of both oxygen nutrients and other chemical chemicals. So, they undergo ch gene genetic changes when compared to them and the antibiotic flow um, is also controlled because of diffusion. So, the antibiotic may kill bacteria right at the top whereas, the concentration of antibiotic at the bottom may be so little um, the bacteria here um, are not killed. So, they get exposed to antibiotic concentration much below the minimum inhibitory concentration. So, they may start slowly developing uh, resistance to antibiotics. Okay. So, there could be antibiotic resistance bacteria of at these layers which have changed their gene pattern which have started growing slowly uh, and so on. Okay. Now, uh, because of shear forces um, because of the um, thickness of the surface 
of the biofilm some bacteria may detach itself and start flowing downstream and again this process of biofilm formation can keep happening. Okay. This is the process of biofilm this can start in hours and uh, this can go right up to days okay. and some of these mature biofilm can be in weeks and uh, go on forever and ever. Now, bacterial movement um, due to chemo attractants, the chemo attractants could be amino acids, sugar, oligopeptides. Okay. Uh, so, this concentration gradient uh, it could be chemotaxis or hepotaxis. Okay. Chemotaxis okay, which is diffusible, so the um, concentration gradient happens because of the diffusion of these chemo attractants. Whereas, there are some attractants which are bound to the surface. Um, so, the physical interactions are long range interactions, they are not very specific, it could be greater than 50 nanometer between the cells and surface, whereas short range interactions will be less than 5 nanometers, hydrogen bonding, ionic dipole interactions, hydrophobic interactions, these are all short range. So, these are all long range. So, we have uh, two types of um, gradients produced because of chemotaxis and haptotaxis, okay. that is why the bacteria starts moving towards surfaces. Uh, the molecular and cellular interaction between bacteria and surfaces, there are many uh, proteins um, on the surface uh, of the bacteria okay, which may be doing uh, this type of uh, job. So, the PSA this is a galactose rich capsular polysaccharide adhesine composed of beta 1 6 linked N acetyl glycosamine amines residues with some oxygen linked substituents of succinate, phosphate and acetate. Okay. Then we have the SAA, this is a slime associated antigen composed of N acetyl glucosamine. Um, we have PIA, this is a polysaccharide composed of beta 1 6 linked N acetyl glucosamines with partly D acetylated residues. Then we also have AAP, this is an accumulation associated protein. So, we see um, the proteins on the surface of the bacteria um, and the proteins on the surface of the material surface, um, there is an attraction. So, the, the bacteria may have a lot of NH2 groups uh, proteins and um, the surface proteins may have a lot of SO3 groups. So, there could be attraction. So, this is the molecular and cellular interaction between bacteria and surface. Whereas, the physical chemical interactions could be because of presence of chemotaxis, because of non bonded interactions and so on. Okay. Um, so, PSA, SA take part in the bacterial material interactions. Okay. Whereas, uh, PIA and AAP in the cell cell interaction. Okay. So, PIA is a polysaccharide consist, uh, composed of beta 1 6 linked in acetyl glucosamines whereas, AAP is an accumulated accumulation associated protein. So, that leads into interaction between cell to cell whereas, PSA and SAA leads to interaction between the cells to surfaces. Okay. So, look at the biofilm mechanism there could be environmental factors, there could be toxins this could be uh, cell growth process and there could be something related to the uh, surface proteins. So, environmental factors could be temperature, stress or stra starvation because uh, like I said um, bacteria at the bottom of the biofilm are almost under starvation condition. Okay. Um, so, bacteria is at cell form it moves into biofilm state okay. uh, and there could be a reversible process also biofilm dispersion. Uh, because of enzymes like proteases which breaks the bond between the bacteria and the surface. We also have something called beta type phenol solubin modulins, these are supposed to be very toxins produced during the biofilm formation which can lead into lot of uh, infection. Now, phase of the cell growth, uh, so the bacteria grows and uh, some um, sometimes it reaches into stationary phase. Okay. Um, and uh, inside the biofilm they may be um, in the stationary phase. Okay. Then we also have the beta toxins, uh, so which are involved in the cell autolysis through eDNA which is also a reversible process. Okay. So, all these um, are involved in the mechanism of uh, biofilm formation. So, what are the problems associated with bacterial biofilms? A um, lot of clinical challenges, chronic or recurrent infection. A patient is a, um, a, bio, a bio material is placed inside the patient and the bio material gets infected. So, the patient uh, gets into chronic infection uh, or recurrent infection, he is given antibiotics, um, it does not get cured, they are given stronger antibiotics and so on actually. Okay. Chronic inflammation, infection later on there could be inflammation 
um, inflammation in the surrounding tissues rapidly occurring antibiotic resistance because uh, as I said the bacteria which are attached uh, to the surface in, inside the biofilm uh, slowly start acquiring antibiotic resistance. So, they, they are not able to be killed whereas, bacteria which are on the surface get killed. Spread of infectious emboli. So, the infection starts spreading on remaining parts of the surfaces. Okay. So, all these are problems associated with the bacterial biofilm. So, uh, for example, if you look at the frequency of occurrence urinary tract infection when you place urinary catheters like 10 to 20 percent of infection is because of this biomaterial centered infection. Percutaneous um, cardiac catheters, short indwelling catheters, temporary pacemakers we are talking in terms of uh, almost 10 percent max. Subcutaneous like a peritoneal dialysis catheters, cardiac pacemakers around 4 percent. Soft tissues, um, mammary tissues, intraocular lenses. Circulatory system like prosthetic heart valves, vascular grafts, artificial heart. Okay. Bones, total knee replacement around 4 percent, prosthetic hip 2 to, 2 to 4 percent. So, if you are thinking about having a long term indwelling biomaterial like hip uh, uh, prosthesis or knee replacement or um, cardiovascular stents or cardiovascular diaphragm valves, then uh, long term use of biomaterials. Okay, medical devices, but you have to address this infection uh, and it is the frequent cause of failure. Okay. This um, uh, numbers were obtained from this particular reference. So, what are the factors influencing bacterial addition? Environment, if there is continuous flow or if there is a stagnant flow, if there is a continuous flow shear forces can prevent biofilm formation, whereas if there is a stagnant then this can lead into a biofilm uh, attachment. Material surface characterization like surface chemical composition, surface roughness, hydrophilicity, hydrophobicity so on. Bacterial characteristic, bacterial hydrophobicity, hydrophilicity, bacterial surface charge. So, all these three factors affect uh, the um, biofilm and bacterial adhesion. So, if you look at serum or tissue proteins, uh, there are many proteins like uh, fibronectin which promotes staphylococcus adhesion to the substratum surface. We have albumin which inhibits bacterial addition to polymer, ceramic and metal surface okay, because blood will contain all these uh, proteins um, by binding to the bacterial cells or changing the substrate surface to more hydrophilic. So, if you have albumin it will inhibit bacterial addition whereas, if you may have fibronectin it promotes Staphylococcus aureus adhesion because albumin is very hydrophilic. Uh, so, when the surface becomes hydrophilic then uh, bacterial addition is reduced. Fibrinogen, it promotes adherence of bacteria especially staphylococci to biomaterial. So, fibrinogen also promotes thrombin, it also increases bacterial addition, it, it polymerizes fibrinogen in PPP um, to fibrin. Because fibrin strands surrounds and link the platelet aggregate to stabilize the thrombus which also promotes bacterial addition. Then we have this PPP poor platelet plasma serum the addition of various uh, uh, coagulant negative staphylococcus onto plasma coated material is much lower than onto the untreated control surfaces. So, generally many of these uh, serum proteins uh, except albumin okay, increases bacterial addition like fibronectin, fibrinogen, thrombin. Okay. Uh, so, what is this? Uh, so, this effect is due to albumin while IgG and Fn are less effective and due to Roman effect in which fibrinogen can be displaced by other proteins present in plum plasma such as high molecular weight. However, PPP with thrombin increases bacterial addition because thrombin enhances bacterial addition, fibrinogen enhances bacterial addition, fibronectin also enhances bacterial addition. Now, so platelets increases staphylococcus addition in comparison to human serum albumin especially in combination with PPP and thrombin. Okay. So, platelets also increases staphylococcus. So, as I said generally PPP serum and albumin inhibits whereas, all other proteins in the serum uh, sort of enhances in different ways the bacterial addition. Now, you may ask what is this fibronectin? Okay. It is a 450 
440 kilo Dalton glycoprotein of the extracellular matrix that binds to membrane spanning receptor proteins called integrins. Okay. Similarly, if you look at uh, what is albumin, the serum albumin is the main protein of human blood plasma and it is water soluble. What is this fibrinogen? It is also a protein produced by the liver and it helps in the blood clotting. Thrombin, it is a serum protease that converts fibrinogen into fibrin, fibrin in blood clot, clot coagulation actually. So, um, so, serum also plays a very important part in uh, uh, addition of uh, bacteria to uh, material surfaces. Okay. So, if you are having uh, implants which uh, are exposed to blood, then you have to consider these aspects also because uh, the blood protein, uh, serum protein contains tissue proteins contain lot of uh, uh, different types uh, which may enhance or retard uh, bacterial addition to various uh, material surfaces. Okay. There are some bacteria which become persistence uh, once they form biofilms. Okay. So, this persistence or persisters, okay, they, these are a small sub population of bacterial cells that are dormant and extremely tolerant to antibiotics. Because you have a, a, a thick um, extra polymeric extracellular polymeric surface that is formed on the um, material uh, with the bacteria live and dead cells, um, antibiotics penetration becomes more problematic. So, the antibiotics right at the bottom of the um, biofilm uh, concentration is so low, uh, much below their uh, uh, minimum inhibitory concentration. So, they become those bacteria become tolerant to antibiotics, they also become persister, they are called persister cells. So, these persistence it is a phenotype expressed by almost all bacteria including major pathogens this can lead to chronic and relapsing infection. These persister cells can also tolerate high doses of bactericidal antibiotics. Small fraction of bacterial population responds and others form resistance or tolerance towards antimicrobial agent. So, that is one of the main reason, reasons um, in bacteria in uh, biomaterial um, related infection because of the uh, formation of these persistent cells. Okay. We will continue about uh, persistence uh, of bacteria in the next class uh, uh, in more detail. Thank you very much for your time.